Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and today I have another home renovation video for y'all. We are going to be tackling the area that I have been dreading. We are going to deal with these stairs. I have never lived in a home with stairs before. So this area has been really intimidating to me. I just don't know what to do. I'm probably going to have to bring it to the professionals because like I said, I don't know how to deal with stairs, but I have to do something with this area. This carpet is original to the house. It is absolutely disgusting. And also a few weeks ago, little Ren Lucille spilled an entire container of Sweet Pickens oil wax on the stairs. So I have clear tape over it right now. It is just bringing down the whole look of this house. So along with this stairwell, we are also going to be renovating this hallway that leads from the garage to the kitchen area and the rest of the home. We had a water leak in this hallway a few weeks ago and had, a cut, had to cut a hole in the wall. So there has been a few things that has happened that is causing me to finally deal with this area. I don't know what we're gonna do here. So we're just gonna take it step by step and see what happens. And no doubt it's gonna be a lot of work. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to do was paint the walls. I thought so much and went back and forth about the color of the walls in the stairway because the stairway was already white and fingerprints were definitely an issue. The boys' bedrooms are upstairs, so the kids, you know, are constantly up and down the stairs and touching the walls, which is fine, but I really do not want to be cleaning off fingerprints all the time, which is what I was doing with these white walls. So I decided to go with this darker, bluish gray color. It is a color that I have previously used and I knew that I liked. So with that decision being made, I got started painting the walls in the stairway, which was not fun or easy. It was definitely a very time consuming process. Y'all, this upside down light fixture in the stairwell has been driving me crazy for months. I just unscrewed it so I could paint behind it. And look at this. I do plan on actually removing the light fixture and painting it and updating the glass globe, but I could have just turned it around months ago <laughs> and it actually gives off way more light turned the right way. I didn't get footage of what the stairs look like underneath the carpet, but they were definitely unfinished. It wasn't something that I'd be able to sand down and repaint. A new material would have to be applied on top of it, whether that be carpet or wood. So my next step was to go meet with a professional to decide what I wanted to do with these stairs. So I just went to my local flooring store to see what my options were on these stairs. First, I asked how much would wooden treads be because that would be, you know, the prettiest option. They said that would cost thousands of dollars, like four to five thousand dollars. So I said, how much would carpet be? And they said five hundred dollars, installation, everything. So I'm like. We're gonna go with carpet. So I did bring my flooring and I looked at samples. This is what I decided on. Of course, I would love something light and bright, but that is just not a practical option. So I went with something that would kind of, you know, blend in with the floors that had lots of colors going on and would hide lots of dirt. And they also said, they can install it immediately and it would only take one hour to max. So these stairs will be getting changed out tomorrow and I am so excited about that. So the carpet has been installed and I do not know how I'm feeling about this space. It's just feeling very dark to me and not in a good way. I even put up the frames that I wanna put in this space to see if it kind of brightened it up. I don't know. I'm just, I don't, <laughs> I don't know y'all. I'm just going to live with it for a little bit and see how I feel about it. I'm going to give it a chance. Now I will say I do like the carpet up close. It looks the way that I thought it would look. However, when I look at it as a whole in the space, it is just coming off very brown to me and just not what I wanted. So I don't know. We'll see. Hey guys. 
I know it has only been seconds for you, but it has actually been three months since I filmed the beginning part of that video. And the blue lasted for about a week, y'all. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't deal with it. I didn't like it. It just was not working for me. And I know that I like the color because I've used it before and I'm actually using it in a range room, but it just was not working in this space. It was too dark and it was changing the whole color and look of the carpet that I picked out. So I went ahead, I repainted it white. Are we surprised? No. So I went to Lowe's where I have been getting my paint. They mix all the Sherwin Williams colors that I loved and I asked them what was the best quality paint. Now I will note that the paint that was on here previously, the white, I knew it was not good quality at all, but I was still scared of all the fingerprints because it was definitely a huge issue in this space. So Lowe's told me that their best paint was the Reserve. It does have a stain blocking formula and it was $48 a gallon. So it is a bit spendy, but like I said, it has been three months since I repainted this stairway back to white and I have not had to clean a single fingerprint off the walls. The only thing that I don't like about this paint is that even though I got it in a satin finish, I find it's a bit shinier than the satin I'm used to. And that probably has something to do with the stain blocking because the shinier, you know, is easier to clean and block stains. Um, so I don't know if I would put it in my whole house just because that's a personal preference for me. I prefer more of a satin matte finish, but for high traffic areas like hallways and stairways, I would definitely recommend this paint. Y'all, if y'all going to take the time to paint, get quality paint. Just after everything I dealt with with the stairway, it definitely confirmed it from the white of the previous owners to this white. Huge difference, y'all. I just want to point out that this is not sponsored at all. I am just giving y'all my opinion as a mom of four that loves white, just like I said with the Ikea um, sofas. You know, if I can figure out products that really work and help you keep your house looking beautiful and also livable with your family, then I want to let y'all know that. So now that the walls have been painted twice and the carpet is done, there are a few other projects that I want to work on in this stairway. I have some artwork that I want to hang up that I am super excited about. I need to paint the light fixture. And then also at the top of the stairs, y'all, they have an outdoor threshold that I really want to try to make look better because, you know, we are inside the house. So I'm going to get those projects done and then we are going to start working on transforming the hallways in this area. I purchased these frames from Ikea. Now I had previously purchased some frames from Walmart. However, when I changed the colors of the walls, I decided that black frames would look much better, but I will be using the other picture frames in my living room when I get back to that makeover. I wanna create my own custom mats for this artwork. So I'm gonna be using poster board. It is just a much cheaper option. It's only about a dollar for a poster board, whereas like a nice mat could cost you upwards of $20. And I have six pictures that I wanna put in this space. So it's just a much more economical option. It also looks, I mean, pretty much just as good. So <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just using exacto knife and the back of my picture frame to be able to cut my poster board to the size that I need. Your poster board will have a matte side and a shiny side. I prefer using the matte side. So you wanna make sure that you're drawing all your measurements on the side that will not be showing. I'm just gonna use my ruler and measure out where I need to make my cuts. And then I'm going to use my exacto knife to cut out a nice rectangle to put my picture in. You definitely want to make sure your cutout is smaller than your picture. 
I'm going to pop in my inspiration picture for this space. When I saw this picture, I knew this is the look that I wanted and I knew exactly the artwork that I wanted to put in the stairway. I've definitely been trying to add touches of Louisiana to my Mississippi home. So I ordered five prints from Miss Connie. She is a South Louisiana artist and I love her work. I have several of her prints at my home in Louisiana. So I knew this was going to be the perfect option for this space. I picked five prints that just really reminded me of home and that I would enjoy looking at. I'll put a link in the description below to the five specific prints that I chose, but also make sure you check out Miss Connie's website. She has so many options and this eight by 11 print was only $12. So her artwork is definitely very affordable. Now it wasn't necessarily cheap for me to create the artwork for the stairway because I needed five picture frames. They were $15 each. I needed five prints. They were $12 each. Then I needed five poster boards. So that was another $5. So in total, it cost me $140, but I feel like it looks so much more expensive than that. And honestly, the feeling that I get when I look at this stairway and I look at those pictures, I feel like it's worth every penny. And I really think that you just can't go wrong in investing in artwork that you really love because it's something that you can take off your walls and move with you wherever you go. I wanted to use the same light fixture that was in the stairway. I just wanted to update it with some paint and some new glass. So I'm using a layer of the sunlit brass and then I'm going to spritz some gold metallic spray paint on it. And then I am going to add some antiquing wax. This is a three layer process that I've been doing on some of the light fixtures in my house just to update them and make them all look cohesive. I purchased this glass globe from Kilgore's antique store. I just love the shape on it. And I absolutely love the way that this light fixture turned out. There was no reason to go buy a new one. This looks like anything you can buy in the store right now. This gold and white is a very popular style. So if you have a light fixture that you don't necessarily love, try painting it before you go out and buy a new one. This is a doorway at the top of the stairs and it has weather stripping and everything so you can block off, you know, the upstairs from the downstairs, which is fine. But I do not like this outdoor looking threshold. So I'm going to see if I can make this look a little bit better. I want to paint this the same color as the rest of my moldings because I just think that is what would look best. However, I'm not sure that latex paint would stick to this metal. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put a coat of chalk paint first. I use chalk paint all the time as primer because chalk paint sticks to everything. And then you could put your latex paint on top of it. And I have had great success doing that. So that is what I'm going to do, chalk paint. And then I'm going to put the Greek Villa in a semi-gloss, which is my molding color and then I am going to seal it in with Rust-Oleum Clear Coat. I did make sure to do this on a day where I could kind of open my house and air it out, and I think this will work out fine. I personally think this looks a whole lot better, but y'all let me know what y'all think. And then I added my favorite ivory jute rugs to this door and that door over there. For the hallways in this area, I really wanted to install that wood paneling that you saw me do in the foyer. In that video, I showed you exactly how to install this. So I'm not gonna go over it step by step, but I will definitely leave a link to that video in the description in case that is something that you want to watch. As I renovate each space, you will absolutely see me doing the same techniques, using the same colors, materials, decor. You do not need to reinvent the wheel in every single room. You can find the things that you love and the things that you know that you like and continue to use that over and over again. I think that makes a home feel beautiful and cohesive and well thought out 
when it kind of looks like it all fits together instead of having a totally different design in every single room. As you probably saw, some of the paneling in these areas are already done because I started working on this many, many months ago and I'm finally just getting back to it and really want to get this space finished. I knew this was going to be a big job because I wanted the car to carry this paneling from the laundry room all the way down the hall that leads to the girls' bedrooms. So I absolutely love the way that this looks and I'm sure I will continue to do it, but I just wanted to let y'all know that it is a lot of work and I think since this hallway had so many doors, that just made it all the more work. First, you have to get the wood from the store, which is a job in itself sometimes. Then you gotta cut down the wood. Then you actually have to install the wood and y'all, they did not pull out a level when they build this house, there's just no way. Like nothing is straight. So everywhere there was a door, I had to do a custom cut and because it was a hallway, there was a million doors. <laughs> also, there were the light switches that I had to deal with. For whatever reason, almost every light switch in this house is at a different height. So I've had to come up with different solutions for each one. Luckily, these switches fail at the same height as the top molding. So I I just put a piece of five millimeter underlayment under the light switch that way everything was at the same depth and then the light plate fits perfectly over it i'm going to paint everything the same color and then the light switch down here ended up being above the top molding and then the light switches in here ended up being on the five millimeter underlayment paneling. So I just cut out around them. Now, if you don't wanna deal with light switches at all, then I would suggest measuring them and figuring out what is your lowest light switch and putting all your paneling and your top molding underneath that. Mine was just so crazy as you can see. So I had to come up with different solutions. So here you can see this one is all painted white. And once I put the switch plate on top, everything will look great. Once all the vertical paneling was up, then I had to add the top trim pieces. Then I had to go back and caulk everything. Now I hate caulking as much as the next person, but you definitely don't want to miss this step because this is what makes everything look perfect. All your imperfections, you can fix with some caulk. Once the caulk was dry, I was ready to paint. I used Sherwin-Williams Greek Villa in a semi-gloss, which is what I've been using for all my trim and doors around the house. But it takes three coats of paint on here. So all this paneling I installed, I had to apply three coats of paint on it. And then once that was done, I had to go do all the touch-ups with my wall paint because it is almost impossible not to get paint on your walls when you are painting all of those top trim pieces. Even though this hallway was a lot of work and it definitely took a lot longer than I expected, I do not regret doing it. I feel like it was the right choice for the space. The drywall definitely had some issues. Some of the drywall screws were starting to pop out. None of the walls are level and I feel like doing this vertical paneling not only looked good, protected the walls, but also camouflaged some of the issues in the space. We have this little nook right here that I would love to do a little custom built-in bench right here where I could put throw pillows and it would be a whole moment, but I don't have enough time in this video. So for right now, I have this $2 stool that I thrifted the other day. And do y'all remember when I thrifted this market basket? I think I paid $5 for it and it has been housing all of our shoes. Look, y'all, this is my 15 year old shoe. Like look at my hand. Look at this shoe, a size 14 and a half, y'all. That's insane, he's 15 years old. Anyway, <laughs> so this is what this area looks like currently. And then this mirror, I love having a mirror here. I got it at Goodwill for $25. Like when we first moved here, before I knew what the style of the house would be. And I feel like it's just 
too much going on in this area. So what I want to do is just go ahead and paint it white and lightly distress it. That way I'll have this mirror. I think it's the perfect size for this space, but it'll just kind of blend in to the background a little bit more. Now I need to deal with this wall. This is what it looked like when we moved in and it's not awful. I don't hate it, but there's definitely things I don't like about it. Plus we have this huge hole that we had to cut when we had the water leak. So my plan is to just go ahead and remove all this wood and shiplap this entire wall. Now I could do the same thing I'm doing on this side, but I have a feeling that the wall will be damaged up here when I remove all this and it's not the same height. You know what I mean? This goes up higher. So I think ship lapping is going to be my best bet. It's not going to match this side, but it is going to match other things that I am doing in the home. So I have a feeling it will look great. It'll add lots of character to this little hallway. So the first thing I need to do is remove this and then we can start adding some shiplap. I am so excited to be removing this top piece of molding. It sticks out about four and a half inches, which may not seem like a lot, but when you're in a small hallway, it definitely feels like a lot. And it is also right at my eye level. So even though it's never actually happened, I always feel like I'm going to run straight into this piece of molding. Removing all this molding was actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I just used my crowbar and my hammer and I just kind of gently took everything off because even though I was gonna be covering up the wall, I was still trying not to make more damage to the drywall. All the boards have been taken down and as you can see, if I wanted to keep the drywall, it would take lots of repairs. So definitely the easiest solution is just to cover it up with wood. Y'all, this was the funnest thing I did this whole video. Removing the caulk with this chisel was so satisfying. <laughs> For the shiplap, I am using five millimeter underlayment, which is what I use for the vertical paneling. I am just cutting it to a different size for a different look. And normally when I do shiplap, I always start at the top first because that's what you see when you walk into a room. But since this space is so small, you're actually looking at the bottom of the wall first. So I'm gonna start there. That way, if I have a piece that I need to cut down, it is gonna be at the the top instead of the bottom and much less noticeable. I do have a video with a detailed tutorial on how to do this shiplap when I did my breakfast nook area. So I'll leave that video in the description below if you want more details on how to create this faux shiplap look. Now, if you are wondering how we are gonna access the plumbing if I cover this up, when we cut a hole in the hallway, we realized that there had been an access panel in the pantry that had been covered up. So if we want to get to the plumbing again, we will create another access hole in the pantry that we will not cover up because why would you cover up your access to your plumbing? I don't know, seems crazy to me. And when we opened up the wall under the stairs, I was really hoping it would be open and maybe I could create like a little nook or a bookshelf, but it was just not possible. It was full of plumbing and full of two by fours. The process of ship lapping this wall was so much easier than the vertical paneling. Also, I've done it so many times before. I could probably do it in my sleep. It just goes so much faster. You have much bigger pieces of wood to work with. There's not as many custom cuts. And once it's up, you don't have that many places to caulk before it's ready for paint. To paint the shiplap, I am going to be using the Valspar Reserve paint in the color White Duck. It is the same paint that I use in a stairway. And since this is another high traffic area, I thought it'd be perfect to use here as well. I'm going to put two coats on here. When I have paneling that covers an entire wall, I like to paint it my wall color. And if I do paneling that only comes up, you know, a third of the wall, then I like to paint it my trim molding color. So that's how I figure out what color to paint my paneling. 
I love rugs and will put them in every space possible. I ordered this rug from Amazon. It's actually the same rug that is in my living room is just in a runner size. So it works perfectly since the living room is right there and you can kind of see the two rugs at the same time. Now, whenever I put rugs down, I always use carpet tape. And this is also from Amazon. It is amazing. I put this on all the edges and it keeps everything still and straight so nobody is slipping and your rugs are not moving. Before I show y'all everything all put together, let me take you back to what it looked like when we first purchased the house. I don't have a ton of footage from this area just because it was hallways. Oh, we did change out the light fixtures in this space. It now looks like recessed lighting instead of those outdated boob lights. And then here is that tile that we removed. So there's all new flooring right here. And do y'all remember when we had a huge opening to the dining room that went all the way through the foyer area. That has all been closed off and that is now a bedroom. The layout just makes much more sense now. This is the laundry room so you can kind of see the hallway from this angle. And this is what it looks like now. I am so glad I decided to take the time to repaint the stairway white. I think 100% it was the right decision for this space. The artwork really pops now and I love this artwork so much. It has been so sweet to see the kids stop and look at them because all the prints here remind us of places back home in South Louisiana. It's not, it's, you know, there's five prints up there, but I feel like just the way that I did them with the big white mats, it doesn't feel like too much. It's just the perfect, touch in that area and then my husband he collects vintage cars little matchbox cars and hot wheel cars so he asked me if i could put him a little shelf so he could display some of his cars and i think it just looks perfectly in the stairwell and as you come down the stairway, you go to the hallway that leads to the laundry room and the garage. Right here, I have these heavy duty hooks. They are my favorite hooks from Hobby Lobby. They are cast iron. And this is where I keep, you know, my purse, diaper bags, lunch boxes, school bags, all that. And then I wanted to put something pretty above it. So do y'all remember that hat that I thrifted? I would like to do a little gallery of hats, but so far I haven't ha found any other ones. Ones, but I think these paper plate baskets work perfectly with the hat for now. And look at this beautiful picture perfect moment in the nook of this hallway. I think painting the mirror was definitely the right decision. It just kind of blends in a little bit more. It looks beautiful. I did not get to make the custom bench that I wanted to in this little nook, but it's okay. I think this works perfectly as well and if I get around to it great if not it's not a big deal I painted the mirror with chalk paint and just very lightly distressed it to bring back some of the details I think it's always a good idea to have mirrors close to your entryway this is the view if you are coming down the hall from either the kitchen or the living room. This is personally my favorite view because I have a picture of each of my kids up and then at the end of the hallway, I have a picture of them all together. I purchased these frames from Ikea and I matted them with the poster board. And y'all, I just took pictures of them in my living room so I would have updated pictures of each of my kids to put in the wall. So if you cannot make it out to see a professional photographer, or don't have the money for that y'all just take pictures of your kids and put them up on the wall they do not need to be perfect they do not need to be professional here's a view of the hallway coming from the other way so you can see the entryway into the living room you can see all the way down into the dining room and then there's an the entryway into the living room i did not want to put another picture on the wall here so i decided to put up a basket with a lamb's ear wreath just for a little texture and color Look at that ship lap wall, y'all. I love it so much. I don't know if I'm going to put anything on this wall. I definitely want to keep this walkway pretty clean, but if I come across something that I feel like will work on this wall, I will definitely add to it. 
I don't think every wall needs to be filled, but like I said, if I find something that I feel like would work, I definitely want to add it. Do y'all remember that frame that I just thrifted from that estate sale? I am obsessed. I love this frame so much. I wanted to put it in a space that I would see it all the time. I had this vintage grass print that I took out of a book. So I used the poster board again and just put the vintage print on top of it. And I think it's absolutely perfect. And this is a view of the hallway from Ren's room. As you can see, I have mixed all the styles in this area. Don't feel like you need to stick with one style. I have French country, I have farmhouse, I have modern, I have it all. And I personally think it works together very well. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. And even though these areas were so much work and I might have had at least one breakdown, <laughs> I personally love love decorating hallways so do not forget about them when you are decorating it is such a great place to hang beautiful pictures or items that you absolutely love i truly hope that y'all enjoyed this video and were inspired please leave a comment below and let me know what you think what was your favorite part of this hallway stairway transformation Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video.